Hello students, welcome to I exam B. In this video, we are going to discuss past year based questions for phase 1 for RBI grade B DEPR 2022. In the previous video, we have already discussed the examination pattern and the structure of the question paper. We have also mentioned the topics that were asked in year 2018, 2019 and 2021. As RBI doesn't provide the question paper, we do not have the exact same questions. But we have recreated them based on the response of the students who have appeared in the exam. And we are going to discuss those questions in the series of videos. This is the part 1 of the series. Today, in this video, we are going to discuss past year based questions for econometrics and statistics. For econometrics and statistics, the questions are distributed into 1, 2 and 4 marks. For 2 and 4 marks, the negative marking is 50%. So we have to be very careful while attempting these questions. These are the few topics that have been asked from econometrics and statistics in the past year. We have already discussed these topics in the previous video. Now, let's move to question number first. Which of the following measure is suitable to compare the size of agricultural holding of India and UK? In these cases, most common reply for these types of question is mean because when we talk about the average holding size, we think it is the mean that represents the average. But this is not the case here because when we talk about the average size of the land holding or average height, it is not the mean that represents the average. Rather, it is the mode that represents the average in these cases. Mode is the most frequently occurred number. The most frequent number of the height or the size holding represent, represents the average in these cases. So here the answer is more not mean. Question number 2. The mean and median for 100 observation is 50 and 52 respectively. The value for the largest item is 100. Later it was found out that the value 110 was misread as 100. The new corrected mean and median will be. So here what first of all we have to see what information we have. The mean is given to us that is 50. Median is given to us that is 52 and number of observation n is given to us that is 100. So there are 100 observation like n1, n2 till n100. 100th observation that was 110. It was read as 100 and the whole thing was calculated based on this 100. Now we have to find the corrected mean and median. How we should find the mean? What is the formula for mean? But we have for mean, we first of all we find the sum of the observation and then we divide it with the number of observation. First, to find the corrected mean, first of all we ha have to find the sum of the observation. That will be old sum will be sum of observation will be n into mean that is 50 into 100 100 is number of observation and 50 is mean so it will be 5000 now new sum what should be the new sum if we subtract 100 from it and if we add 110 then we can find the new sum that will be 5010 then how to find the new mean the mu new mean will be number new sum upon number of observation that should be 50.1 in this way we can find the mean now how to find the median new median in this case the largest observation was 110 and it was replaced with 100 so if we are changing or replacing one observation there will be no effect on median so mean median will remain 52 so right answer for this question is 50.1 and 52 let's see the options here 
C. 50.1 and 52 is the correct answer for this question. This question can be asked in one marks because you have to find the value for only one variable and if other variable was given like a standard deviation is given to you and you have to find the value for corrected mean and standard deviation. In these types of situation the question will be for two marks. So these types of questions are most likely to come in the exam. Let's see question number three. For a frequency distribution, the coefficient of variation is 5, standard deviation is 2, Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness is 0 0.5. Now we have to find the value for mean and mode. Here we have to find the value for two variables, so if this question is important for two marks. Let's see. First of all, we write down all the informations we have. We have coefficient of variation, we have a standard deviation. We have Carl Pearson well coefficient for skewness. Now we write down the formulas we can use to find the mean and mode based on the information given to us. We first of all we write down the formula for skewness, coefficient of skewness that is mean minus mode upon standard deviation. We have to find mean and mode both so we cannot use this formula right now the another formula we can use here is coefficient of variation that is cov coefficient of variation is equals to 100 into standard deviation upon mean so here mean will be 100 into standard deviation upon coefficient of variation putting the values of the given variables Standard deviation is given to coefficient of variation is 5. So mean will be 40. Right? Now let's use this value and put it in this formula to find the value for the mode. Skewness of coefficient is 0 0.5. Mean now is 40. We have to find the value for mode. And standard deviation is given 2. So 0 0.5 into 2 is equals to 40 minus mode then mode is equals to 40 minus 1 that is 39 so the value for the mode is 39 and for the mean it is 40 let's see the options here mean is 40 and mode is 39 so option b is the correct answer Question number 4. The mean and standard deviation of 100 observation is 50 and 10 respectively. Which will be the new mean and standard deviation if the each observation is multiplied by 3. So what happens here? If let's say there are 100 observation like N1, N2 until N100. The mean and standard deviation are given to you mean is given 50 standard deviation is given now what happened the each observation is multiplied by 3 so in spite of n it, be, it becomes n3 n1 3 and 2 like that till 3 and 100 so now what should be the new mean and standard deviation in these cases it is a very simple question and now we see what should be the case. For mean and standard deviation, the cases are different. If we add, subtract, multiply and divide each observation with a certain value, new mean can be found out by applying the same operation to the old mean same operation okay in this case you are multiplying each observation with 3 so new mean will becomes we have to multiply the old mean that is 50 with the same operation that is multiplied with 3 so it becomes 150 but what happened in this case of a standard deviation there are two cases here for addition and subtraction no change okay 
but for multiplying and dividing we have to apply same operation on the old value to find the new value so here we have to multiply with 3 so 10 into 3 that is 30 so 30 is the new standard deviation and 150 is the new mean so option c should be the right answer for this question coming to the last question for this part the mean of two samples size 50 and 100 are 50 54.1 and 50.3 respectively the standard deviation of these samples are 8 and 7 what will be the value for the combined mean and combined standard deviation it's important for two marks and these are simple because these are directly formula based question for calculating the combined mean and standard deviation there are two simple formulas and putting on the values given here you can easily calculate the value for the combined mean and standard deviation for mean let's see for mean the formula is n1 x1 bar plus n2 x2 bar upon n1 plus n2 and here what is given n1 is given to you n1 is 50 n2 is 100 x1 bar is given to you 54.1 and x2 bar is given to you 50.3 then you have the value for standard division sigma 1 bar is 8 and sigma 2 bar is 7 by putting the value for n1 n2 x1 bar and x2 you can easily calculate the value for the combined mean that is denoted by x bar let's see what is the formula to calculate the value for a standard deviation here for two series the standard deviation for the combined one can be calculated with 1 upon n1 plus n2 then n1 sigma 1 square plus d1 square plus n2 sigma 2 square plus d2 square after calculating the value for sigma square you can easily calculate the value for this that sigma by un taking under root of it here you have the value for n1 n2 and sigma 1 sigma 2 but you have to find the value for d1 and d2 how to find the value for d1 and d2 d1 is the difference between the mean of the first series and from the combined mean and d2 is the difference of the second series from the combined mean so once you find the value for the combined mean mean of the combined series you can easily calculate the value for d1 and d2 and using all these value and putting these into this formula you can easily calculate the value for the standard deviation these are quite lengthy questions and takes practice to quickly solve them so practice for these types of questions there can be other questions for one marks also where you have to find the value of only one thing like you have to find the value only for standard deviation using this formula let's see the answer for this it once you solve the question you will find the mean is 51.7 51.57 and the standard deviation is 7.5 so this was all for this part we will discuss more questions in the coming videos if you haven't subscribed the channel subscribe it and press the bell icon to get further notification on the videos thank you all the best for your exams